Twenty two people waiting. Okay. I think we should be live now. So yep. welcome to our very first Mindbug live stream. Uh, please give us a short hint if you can see us and hear us so that we uh, know that everything is working because it's our first time setting up the stream and we are not quite sure that everything works as expected. So if you could give us a short thumbs up in the comments or so showing us that it's working, that would be great. So what is the, the topic that we want to talk about today? We want to show you a little bit our um, digital prototype that we have been working on for, for quite some time now. And we want to um, talk a little bit about the new Mindbug expansions. But to be honest, I'm not quite sure if we are already live or not. Yes, yeah, we are live. Oh, I think on my second screen it works. Okay, yeah. perfect. And people are writing comments already. Okay, then. I think the best would be to uh, start with a very short introduction round. We have uh, brought uh, quite a few members of the team, not all of them, but we are six people today. Um, so I, you maybe don't know all of them. So we want to do a very, very short introduction round. So um, Roma, do you want to start since you are at an airport right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Roma, Roma, uh, French guy in the team and uh, working on the development part of this beautiful project. Thanks. So, Stefan, you are next. Yeah, I'm Stefan and I'm the general manager of, of Kisaki Studios. Kisaki Studios, by the way, is the company doing the digital implementation of Mindpack. Uh, Markus, what about you? Yeah. Hello, I'm Markus. Uh, yeah, I work a lot on the digital implementation and also help on the on the Kickstarter and distribution part of the physical game. And Basti, up to you. Hi. Yeah, I'm Basti, another Mindbug servant working on the on the development of the digital app. And Dominic, you are the last one. Hey guys, Dominic, not really working at the digital team, more on the physical game, so supporting Marvin on all kinds of stuff uh, regarding to the to the physical game and the new Kickstarter. Thanks. Um, I'm Marvin. I'm working on uh, the physical and the digital game, and um, I'm one of one of the designers and the publisher of um, of Mindbug. So, when you have some questions regarding the the, the game itself, the cards, um, or whatsoever. Please write uh, write it in the comments. We will we will try to answer them as best as we can. And um, if you have some specific questions about the digital implementation, feel also free to um, throw your questions at us. Today we have all the all the experts here. So if you want to know which kind of database we use, which kind of servers, and all those nitty gritties um, of the development, feel free to put your questions also in um, in the comments. Our idea was to um, to just start playing a little bit of uh, Mindbug. Um, we want to start with uh, Mindbug uh, Beyond Evolution today, and maybe show uh, also a first-time gameplay of uh, Mindbug Beyond Eternity thereafter. So our first competents today are, I think, Markus and Basti, if I'm correct. No, Stefan. Ah, Stefan and Basti. Oh, I'm okay. So I will start the game. What I will do is um, I will go into the game once Basti has joined and spectate it. Yeah, uh, I created Mar the game. Mar Marcus, can you join? Just give me a second. Can, yeah. you, can you play Marcus against joined. Perfect. Okay. So I will... Yeah, I can join. Spectate the game and let's see. We are on the side of Stefan, seeing his hand now. So we uh, 
we see some cards we have already seen in uh, in a previous stream or in the community match. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do, Stefan? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm thinking which card. Um, I go with the steel horn. Ah, the good old steel horn that has done done some amazing things in the um, in the live stream the I did against Paul yeah. Krogan. Uh, he crushed me with it. So you can also right click on it to see um, a big image of it if you don't know the um, the effects. So this one, the Steel Hunt, is once it is defeated, the opponent has to discard three cards, which is quite a lot if you consider that you only have 10 cards total. So um, let's see what Markus is going to do about it. Yeah, I also have issues joining. <laughs> Ah, okay. So, wait a moment. This, by the way, is one of my one of my favorite cards. So, yeah. I think we need to do it again. So it didn't join yeah. and uh, reconnects not not yeah. working. Okay, so I will I will what the issue is. I will end the game and. Um, uh, start a new one, or you start a new one, Let's and I will join. Start. Yeah. Yep. Joined. Now it's working for me. Is it working for you as well, Stefan? Yep. I mean, okay. Let's try it. Let's try if it also works. If I spectate okay. again. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. my turn. Okay. We are again on the side of Stefan, but now okay. we don't have a steel horn anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was on purpose, Marcus. That was a good play, Marcus. This is how, how developers uh, solve their problems in the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I always lose. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so now we see a sweet fighter. Exactly. Yeah, people in the chat are actually right. So we talk about the discard and the action expansions. Right now in the Kickstarter, they have different names. It's uh, it's a bit different during development phase and when you really make it a product. So we try to get used to <laughs> the new names still. Yeah. So I played the the puffer mag um, as the answer to the to the sweet fighter. Yeah, the puffer mag yeah. is poisonous, and when when it is defeated, uh, it defeats all enemy creatures with power eight or more. So. It's a good answer to Sweet Fighter. Actually, I play it again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, another that's, Sweet Fighter. That's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of life. That's life points. Life actually, points are not important. Actually, very weird to see this because long time we had a bug where we didn't play with <laughs> with doubles yeah, as it was intended. Oh, so also a good answer to Sweet Fighter. Oh, so good answer. Hmm. Uh, no, I don't mind back. Yeah, you see, people are quite <laughs> quite hesitant using their mind bugs. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to get rid of this. But if you mm. know that they are hesitant, you can use that actually against them and play one of the very strong cards in the first turn. Oh, don't know what to play this one, maybe. We implemented in the client um, basic features like you just saw, like the emoticons. Um, these are just in the prototype state, um, but you will be able to communicate via these with your with your opponent. Currently, no live chat is is planned in the in the game, in the client. So you really want great. to have lives, <laughs> right, I want Marcus? to have lots of lives in this game. <laughs> <laughs> this is like. Yeah, I you won't get ah, that you, one. You too. Okay. You too. Now, yeah, you have, now you have seen a mind bug in action. So we have this yeah. tentacle that's grabbing the card. Yeah. And um, also, this card has an has an action that I just mind bug. So I can use the effect of the card instead of playing a card or attacking with a card. Okay. Uh, no. And now. Um, I use. I don't mind bug that, and now I want to use the action of the of the curious tadpole, and I will evolve it to the frog prophet. 
um, which now is tough, and it has a power of three. Oops. And um, when I evolve it uh, one more time, uh, then um, it will be the world eater, and I will gain a life. And just that you know, Marcus, um, I will do that. Ah, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, I mean, the Cake Trickster is, is a very strong card. We had a lot of problems in the community match against it. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it, it restricted us from playing a lot of cards we actually wanted to play because uh, the, its action is that you can choose an enemy creature and the opponent has to attack with it if able. So, um, yeah, I mean, everything below six dies immediately against the Cake Trickster. But if you have something like the Sweet Fighter on board, you basically can yeah, let almost all the creatures attack into them. But if you look at the board of Stefan, I mean, the Puffer Mac is not a good attack for Marcos. The Sawn is not a very good no. attack for Marcos. And the Frog Prophet, I mean, it's at least tough. So it uh, survives the attack and then can probably evolve into its final form. So curious to see what he's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. It might be one of the, the um, uh, seldom times where I win a game <laughs> against Marcus. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. But I have not so good options here. Perhaps it was, was good for me that I trained against the AI. Yeah, pro so far. I'll try this one. Oh, the um. lady. It's also one of our evolution lines. Um, and it has also an action where it can evolve into something, into a bigger storm into a typhoon and a tornado. Hmm. Okay, I want to have the word eater. Mm -hmm. Oh, also tough. Yeah, it's it's still tough, Marcos. I think that's something we um, we have done on purpose in the design team. Um, so if an evolution has tough, we would not take it away on a higher level as it would be kind of yeah. strange. I think it would work rules wise, but it would probably cause some questions from people. So um, if the, so now the card is exhausted, but it doesn't have tough anymore. Is it still uh, stays it on the battlefield or will it be defeated? Okay, so Marcos made the Sorn attack with his cake trick, trickster. And because the Sorn is power five, it lost against the Cloud Lady, which is power four. Um, why mm. that? Because the Zorn had has this super weird ability uh, that uh, when it fights, the creature with the higher power is defeated instead of the, the one with the lower power. So um, most of the time this is an advantage for the Zorn, but now Marcus used it against it. I wonder what people think. So leave a comment uh, on cards like that, that turn the, the standard logic upside down. Do you like them? Do you want more of those those things? Oh, the first sneaky. Hmm. <coughs> That's a hard thing. So there is a question in the chat, Marvin. I will yeah. forward it to you. Um, do you think it's it's good to mix all the cards with the expansions release? Maybe you could offer some recipes as examples in the new rules book. Or maybe not in the that, rules book, but afterwards. That would be, I think it would be a good thing to get recipes from the community as well. Yeah, so exactly. So we are here on the lazy side. <laughs> we we hope to we hope <laughs> the community comes up with some great recipes, um, and we are super happy to share them. Um, I okay. know that this is done for some games like Dominion, for example, where you have a huge pool and always also often only need a small subset of the whole pool, and where it it's very important that the cards are very synergistic. Um, I think in Mindbug it's much less important than it is in Dominion, for example, to have cards that are super synergistic. But it can be a lot of fun if you have a lot of synergistic cards. So um, I'm super curious to see what kind of uh, combination people will do. We um, we might have some recipes in the future on the on the website. We will not have them in the rulebook, I think, because um, we uh, we didn't test so many different uh, combinations. Hi. We tested a little bit with all the cards together, 
but um, we didn't test like hundreds or thousands of different uh, different recipes. Yeah. And I think the consistency of a set itself is the most important thing. And if you then open it up to other sets, it still works. I think it's still a cool thing to, to play with the, the, oh. the uh, synergetic uh, combinations within the set. This is, this is really a crucial thing. And this is enough work to get this, get this uh, matching each other, I think. I think mm. it's super funny in this game that we see... Do you have something else to kill it from my side? Mm. So, while they are thinking about <laughs> the radi radioactive rabbit, which really? is also a crazy card, um, because when it is played, you give it to the opponent. So you basically give them a power 3 frenzy rabbit, but once it is defeated, it defeats all their other creatures. So, Marcos is probably thinking oh. about how or if what? Stefan has something to defeat it. Um, not sure. Not, that, on, that not <laughs> on the board at the moment, but he might have something in his hand. So what I wanted to say before I, is, I think it's very interesting to see that these evolutions here, they are super powerful in their, um, in their uh, level three evolution line stage, but at the moment, it's not like they would dominate the game at all. They are super, they are super strong and powerful, but it's not that you, I have not the feeling that they are no answers in the moment at the moment on the board. So, curious to see how this will turn out. Yeah. So now, Marcus. I don't know. I don't know what will happen. Ah, okay. You have this one. This, this is this Ugly. is the final move. This is the Oops. final move. Not final, final, I think, <laughs> because you must have a plan B for me mind bugging it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no way. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, a, I would, it's a good move. That's a good, that's a good one, yeah, true. You know me, I'm a direct person. <laughs> you, you always directly see what I'm up to. And uh, now I want to play the Swiss Army Buck and copy, copy your, your play effect from the Irving Assassin. Yeah, sure. Mm, there was one other question for me. Um, what happens when an opponent has one of your cards um, evolution form in the physical version I'm not sure if I completely understand the question but I think the question is about how the evolutions work in physical form right so what I can do can I do it yes I can do it we received today the prototype of uh, or the beta oh that's the wrong one the uh, beta print run of the beyond evolution set for some of our reviewers and i can show you for the first time the evolution cards how they will look in the physical game so this is the one that you have seen on the board already the tap toll and it looks like a standard mind bug card. On the back, it's a mind bug bag, and on the front, it's just a normal, a normal creature. And you see that it has the um, power, uh, the the level one over here. And then you have the second level over here. And when you, this is completely outside of the game. So level one is uh, mixed and matched with all the other cards that you play. And this one lives in a separate. Um, in a separate deck aside and when you evolve this card the level one you put it out of the game and use this card instead and when you evolve to level three you just flip it around because on the back of the card um, it has its level three and if if the level two or three gets defeated or put back to your hand um, you just remove it out of the game and take the level one card again and put this one into your discard pile or this one into your hand. So you will never have this double-sided card in your hand or in your discard pile. That's how they work. And maybe to make sure that we didn't miss the the uh, another um, way you can, you can read that question, if the opponent takes over your already evolved card, it stays in the evolved state. Yes. Just to make sure that it was not this qu this question yeah. intended, and now we see the world leader in 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 play, uh, which is a really powerful card. 
There is a and, timer, Stefan, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> ex enjoying my time because now okay. you, you, you played your last mind fuck. Yeah, true. And and now I will do my final move. Um, so this really is the final bad. move now. Yeah. So not oh, not the move eight. before. Oh, you want so, to go the live? The Dora, um, uh, Dr. Orang Utan is uh, has a play effect. You may play uh, when you play it. You may lose one life, and if you do, uh, you return all enemy creatures to the opponent's hand, which is a huge tempo play for Stefan here because Marcos has a huge board. Yes, and That's I will true. do that. I will lose my life. And, and you see now... what happens. So his uh, um, his evolution just uh, reverted. Reverted, reverted back to, back to level, level one. one. Uh, and now, and he, now has... he has level, level one. I have a big head, head now. <laughs> yeah, enjoy, enjoy. And I have a mind bug, just so that you know. And I know basically most of the cards that you have on hand. So That's true. Stefan, you know what usually happens if you like talk like yeah. that and say okay yeah. now i have won and i'm the best and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i know it but but that's why i enjoy my bug it, it gives me the opportunity to enjoy that i have the feeling that i win before i lose that's why i love my bug <laughs> actually it was a really really good move so yeah yeah it was not I, i'm really proud i mean we are playing live <laughs> so it's the first time the world can see my skill so yes i i give it all but i I just copy the move, I think. Ah. <laughs> you're, you're such... <laughs> it was oh, so good, I should copy it. <laughs> oh man, these feelings are so hard. Oh, you're, you're on the top and... <sighs> what do I do? Yeah. You have a uh, mind bug? <laughs> I, I have yes, a mind bug. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I think I have to mind bug. Marvin, help me. <laughs> I, might back. I, I mean, this is a perfect example of what you what you want to bring your opponent into. So if uh -huh. he mind bugs, he cannot properly take and or make use of the action. <laughs> if think... he doesn't, he loses like his whole board. So the funny thing is, if you don't mind bug, I think we are back to the beginning, but <laughs> with all cards in our head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I never had this in a single game. <laughs> so, me neither, and it's super fun to see a situation like that. I have never seen something like that. <laughs> oh. I'm wondering whether we should do that or this is just okay. Well, yeah, I will. I will use the mind bug. What do you think? I will use the mind bug, and I won't use my play effect. Okay. Mm, now it gets. Oh, what to do now? So no so mind bugs left. Yeah. No. It should be clear if I'm winning. <laughs> so uh, just just to the audience, what you can see now with that, um, we implemented in this prototype um, all the game mechanics. So I was able, when I played the Swiss Army bug, I was able to to cancel the play action. As it says, you may copy the play effect of another creature. So all these effects of the cards are fully implemented in the current in the current version. <coughs> Hmm. Actually, to give some insights, we used yep. uh, we used the uh, the digital app prototype as it is uh, for playtesting the expansions that you can now see in the Kickstarter uh, campaign. So it's a really cool way to do iterations on on cards and tweak them a little bit. Really have like the logic implemented and uh, support you on that. I played that one. It's so easy. Yeah, and I will. And one thing that, we are, that I also wanted to mention is that um, we received a little funding from um, the German government to um, to implement this prototype, and um, that helped us tremendously to to get it to the point where it is where it is, it is right now. Um, so this phase will still be go on for like about two months or so. Uh, this is uh, when, when we want to have uh, the prototype finished, and yeah, then it really uh, it really depends on yeah how we will be able to to fund the production phase. Let's let's call it that way because there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, we have like a lot of logic implemented, but it's more it's more like that that you need for a for a real uh, successful game these days. You need a lot of uh, UI UX. Uh, stuff to work well and um, yeah we are also very interested to 
experiment with new game mechanics, game modes, and um, the whole ecosystem around a game like that is also something that still needs to be implemented. And putting also the door and the story um, to the game. So, how is this game evolving here? Um, we, I think we are back now to Marker's thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there is a RoboPub. We use the there RoboPub. Is a... It's, a, it's a card that uh, we use to win the community match. It, it was a little bit shady because the card was not revealed before and we used the, some kind of new car that has never been shown to win the match. But um, it's actually a pretty simple one. It's just a sneaky, tough, little, sweet RoboPub. That is just set up to do a hit. Yeah, I yeah. also think Marcus is out of of, all, yeah. of options. Yeah, you have plenty of options on the board now. <laughs> Bit annoying. We should have a, a shorter timer for Marcos in that game. I loved it when the timer was at 20 seconds per move. Oh, oh come so, on. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. shit. Did you forget about that one, Stefan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost all cards, I think, right? <laughs> oh, and ah. can you make a tag into it? Oh, that's so bad for you, Stefan. Do I have any option? Come on. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Robopop was only here for blocking. Oh, verdammt. Which is a bit sad. Damn. Okay, I will get rid of the Robopop. Yeah, now make me... Make me attack with the radioactive rabbit. That, that's why... That that's what the... Hurt. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> And there you see the the combo potential of only two cards in game that can twist a lot of the board state upside down. That's I, li I love that I, uh, on mind bug. Oh, oh, big big Swiss oh, army oh. bug. Now there we have a big hunter. <laughs> what to do now? Still, it felt for me most of the time of the game that I will that I will win. So mm, I'm not so sure about it. Marcus had a lot of has a lot of cards in his hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I need to get rid of the cards. <laughs> well, but... oh, I don't know which one. Mm. Ooh, Marcus got rid of his cloud lady. Okay, I killed the panda. And he decided to defeat the panda. So that was the earwig coming into play. When it is played, um, you make sure this card a card. Good. And if you do, you defeat a creature. And that's what Marcus, uh, Marcus just did. And while I was still looking at the card, I think uh, Marcus, uh, Stefan hunted the, uh, the earwig assassin. And then Marcus made him attack with a cake trickster. This one is one oh, of my favorite art, oh, artifacts that. of the, the set <laughs> with this uh, little Captain Hippo that uh, also has a very nice ability. Ah, uh, that's a good one a against this here. <laughs> oh, back to the life oh. game plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still want to gain some life. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Now you're out of cards, out of cards. Yeah, Let's but you cannot that. block with your Sweet Fighter anymore. Oh. So, Stefan oh. is really now completely Seven out of options. Yeah. No. I think that was it. Okay. But I cannot block with the Sweet Fighter. Uh... You know that I don't have any cards on my yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My deck. So. Come on, Marcos. Just attack. You cannot block with it, attack with it. <laughs> That's it. OK. 
Okay. I think we see the trickster go. Goodbye. Yep. And yeah, now I think that that was it. That's I it. Think Stefan. I'll win the race here. Yeah, yeah I can Marcus, give up. Marcus is going to win the race, and that's it. That was a pretty long well played. Game. It was quite, yeah. quite long game, but very strange with all that lots of cards in hand. It's really uh, unique, I think. I it never was had a that. unique game, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Stefan. Thank you. Marcus. I didn't. I didn't. I, at, at the beginning, I was thinking you win. I, I think you always you also it, thought that. It, right? For me, it feels <laughs> most of the time like that that I think I'm winning. And but then... yeah, but you gave me the combo with the with the rabbit and the cake. But I told you so, Stefan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're most of the even time. Even I have right? rabbit, rabbit yeah. and earwig. I think when you have the rabbit and uh, options to to blow it up, yeah, yeah, but that's hard. Yeah. Now we now we know why you have such a bad win rate, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. The, the world can see it. So, hmm. So shall we? Mm. Okay. Sh shall we show the stream? Uh, maybe the Beyond Eternity set live on stream. Yep. Is mm -hmm. someone willing to play against me? I can do. Maybe Basti, yeah. Oh. Okay. I will uh, create a room. Right. Okay. So... Um, I will show some of the cards because I think a lot of them have not been not been revealed so far. Um, that's actually bad for me if I t talk a lot about my cards. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to. <laughs> I have to. Um, okay, not sure. It's all about the fun, Marvin. And probably yeah, you will you still can. win, so... You think so? Um, uh, I mean, you okay, designed will... all this stuff. Okay, then I will, I will talk about the cards that I play. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to start with the end zombie horde. Uh, it's power mm -hmm. seven and it's tough, and when it attacks, it can boost two cards to this. So um, I can choose uh, from the different discard piles cards that are in the discard pile, and put them below the end zombie horde to increase their power. So if there are two, would, if there would be two cards in the discard piles, I could on attack uh, make this a power nine creature. But at the moment, the discard piles are still empty, so um, it's not a huge threat, Basti. What do you think? Actually, you can have that. Ooh. <laughs> I will play a Tornado Dragon, oh, which I lets am. me discard up to two cards, so I can only uh, also choose only one, and for each card discarded, I can defeat an enemy creature. But my end zombie heart is tough. So that's good, but I have to tell a little story about the Tornado Dragon because this now is really my favorite art of the of both sets. And that's not only because the, the artwork is super cool, um, but it's also a card that my uh, six-year-old son came up with. So uh, he is super into mind bug and he's drawing like different mind bug creatures every morning when he wakes up. And uh, one day he was uh, like combining fantasy creatures and elementals and one result was a tornado and a dragon and i thought it's such a cool idea that i gave it to our um to our illustrator dennis and um yeah he made out uh, out of this idea he made or, or, of the scribbles of my son he made this awesome card so i love it but um yeah at this here i don't want to use a mind bug on it right i would like to discard a card Oh, that's an interesting card. This card. And the card I discarded is can can be known from the base set. It is uh, actually before I show it, it's um, it's the last blessed card that has not been revealed yet. Mm -hmm. So um, we will show it to the audience. Um, <laughs> it's the blessed tiger squirrel. You know it from the base set, and it doesn't like the big creatures with power seven or more. And um, this one is, while it is in the discard pile, enemy creatures with power 7 or more cannot attack and or block. 
Which so have is, fun with your ant zombie horde over there. Which is super bad for me at the moment because I cannot attack with my ant zombie horde to get rid of it. Um, and that's... Uh, at least that slowed you down a bit. That slowed me down. Um, I'm not so sure what I want to do about it. But I think what I'm going to do is I play an Agile Rooster for now. Um, this is a power 5 creature. It's Frenzy. Um, and it also has a, a weird effect because uh, it, you can only be, it can only be blocked by creatures with power within one of this creature. So it can only be blocked by creatures uh, with power 4, uh, 5 or 6. And... When we designed this card, we actually wanted to um, come up with something that is kind of a threat, but it's not sneaky and not one of those big threats, but we still wanted to make it a threat. And I think this, uh, this attacks the opponent from a completely different angle, and um, I think that's a, that's a lot of fun. Now it's and I think that's a good option <laughs> to use a mind bug. Now it's attacking because, from a different angle. Yes, because I know my hand and I know that I can use this rooster on my side. Mm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. As you can see, there are some cards that still don't have an artwork. Um, that's uh, the last, I think it's three cards, although that are still missing illustrations that um, Dennis is currently working on them. And um, yeah, this one has also has a crazy effect. Oh, if, if Busty did include the pictures, he should now know which card it is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I'm not sure who did it. Maybe to be honest, to be honest, I think we developers are not the people who play the game the most. So, <laughs> <laughs> and things have changed. Like uh, yeah. so before the the Kickstarter campaign, like close to 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 coming to the to the release of the campaign, some artworks have changed and stuff has changed and names and stuff like that. It's always different during development phase and when you really reveal the product. So you got to get used to new names. All right, yeah, I boost the goat, one. Goat dragon. It can boost one to any creature on play, and when it attacks. It can defeat a creature that has been boosted, a boosted creature. And that is annoying in many different ways because <laughs> boost means take a card from a discard pile. And if you remember, there is my little friend the squirrel that makes I Marvin's really creatures not attack and block. So it's really a stretch here. I really want to get rid of this one in the discard pile. Obviously, you want, because yes. I want to activate my zombie horde. Mm hmm. All right, and let's try it like that. So I select this uh, this card and I use it to boost it on the Agile Rooster. And that's a fun interaction in this set because now the Agile Rooster is power 6. And if you remember, its ability is that it can only be blocked by creatures within power 1 of it. So now it can be blocked by creatures with 5, 6 and 7. So now I enabled both of my creatures to to be able to block it. Otherwise, it could have attacked me and I could not have done anything about it and would have lost two lives to it being frenzy. So, Basti. Actually, I'm just going to attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good because choice. sometimes if you have the biggest creature, just send it over. <laughs> well, I have to take it. Well, actually, I'm not sure this was the best move. Hmm. We will see, we will see. Um, I think a lo long time it was my strategy to always uh, make a hit to uh, decrease the life of the opponent when, when you can, but the AI is not doing this. Interestingly, it, it, it likes to build up the board. Mm. Yeah. And it plays right, quite good with that. So, not sure about the tactic. I have the feeling that the AI play, plays with me. With my feelings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I will. <laughs> I will go with radioactive pest. It's a power one poisonous, 
and attack when it attacks it defeats an enemy creature with power seven or more so um what we did in both sets actually is um, we tried to create some poisonous creatures that are motivating the people uh, the player to attack with them because in the base set most of them are quite passive creatures that are used to defending for defending and but now some of the poisonous creatures have very strong um, attack abilities or other reasons to attack and um, this one is one of them Mm -hmm. And Marvin, just to to make Basti's life easier, I'm going to ask you a question out of the chat. Um, um, Herpel uh, Pace um, ask um, um, that there are now two expansions um, out there, and if they are somehow linked to each other. And a second question from him: Wouldn't it be better to release them not together to stretch out the hype? Um, good questions. So from I would say we try to create a little bit of lore that connects the both uh, expansions. And, um, but they are not connected gameplay-wise. So you can combine them, but you don't have to in any way. Um, and I will ask, uh, answer the second part of the question after I decided whether I want to uh, mind bug this Daktra here or not. Um, it's a hunter which doesn't bother me too much at the moment since because my creatures are all stronger I think I'm uh, but if it attacks it will destroy a poisonous creature right yeah yeah that's correct but I'm going uh, but I'm going to attack with it anyway so I defeated okay. the, the power eight creature on attack and now I have a attacking poisonous creature so yeah. I think that's a good that's a good attack I get uh, a lot of value out of the radioactive pest here Ouch. Yes, you do. I will block it right away. Yeah, okay. So they trade it. Um, the, and the second part of the question was whether it would have been better to release them separate to keep up the hype over a longer period. Yes, absolutely. Um, for us, it's, um, however, we are a very small company and a very small team. And it's quite difficult to prepare, a lot of work to prepare a Kickstarter and to pre prepare a release. So um, we decided to put them to put them together. People are asking for for new cards, and um, we decided to put it to put them into 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 one release. But um, yeah, there were also um, the options to do like multiple Kickstarter campaigns per year, um, like. The trading card games do all three months a new expansion, for example, but uh, we just could not uh, could not keep up with that pace at the moment with a small team and all the stuff of work that goes around it with logist organizing logistics and stuff like that. That would would have would have increased the cost for us quite a bit, um, and so we decided to put all of them into one into one set. You want to play stuff from my discard pile, and you have a sneaky creature here. You sneak At some point, I might want to, yes. Yeah, I want to mind bug this card. So, I want to play stuff from your discard pile. So, and... But first of all, I want to put a little bit of pressure on you with my sneaky creature here. Oh. There's another question. Oh. From the chat about the uh, digital version, uh, if it's still in development and if there's any timeline on a public release, I think that's a good question. And yeah, we are we are actively developing it, and you see a prototype here, um, and oh, no. we we will not uh, at the current state we don't have a, um, a final release date, but we plan to make like an. Uh, a closed beta test and then followed followed by probably an open beta test. Um, and I think in the do we have a link here for for sign up? Uh, I yeah, think in the email we sent. It. Yeah, maybe we can post it in the chat. It. So yeah, if you if you're inter interested in in helping us uh, in the closed beta test, you can uh, sign up in the list. And then once we are ready to to let more people in, uh, we will contact you. I'm going to attack with a goat dragon and I'm going to defeat the agile rooster on attack because it's a boosted creature. 
Yes, I won't block it. I'll take the hit. Oh, you blocked it. Oh, I blocked it? Oh, I misclicked. <laughs> so misclicking is a thing here. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to do that because it's much better for me. You should drag uh, and drop, Basti. You should drag and drop. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm not getting used to it, so I'm I'm still hoping for clicking the right buttons. Um, okay. Marvin, another quick question from the chat: um, Whether the promo cards will also be from 2022 will also be available in German? Yes, all the cards will be available in uh, all languages that we currently support. And Oops. you choose the language in the um, in the pledge manager, which will probably be live in maybe three or four weeks after the campaign. That's our goal. Um, I'm going to, yeah, it's still this th thing in the discard pile again that makes me hmm. not attack or block with my strong creatures. Um, and I lose the race here, so what am I going to do? I don't mind. I still attack with my sneaky creature. Ooh. I'm gonna put some pressure here. Mm, I'm going to block. So I give up my sneaky threat, but I'm going to play a card from your discard pile then. You won't play the sneaky guy, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a pretty good answer to the board at the moment. It it represents a threat, and um, it kind of can become an answer to the water answer later. So true. I think I win the race from here, so I'm quite happy with the board state. Hmm. I'm not giving up my last mind bug on the Gold Dragon. I'm gonna boost your sneaky guy. <laughs> will probably take one hit and then hope that my goat will destroy it. Giving away my plan, my whole plan, Marvin. <laughs> So, while Marvin is thinking, we have two I, more questions in the chat. I will do something very. Yeah, I will do this one. So I will play the Soul Manipulator. This is this is a super versatile card. It does a lot of stuff. Um, so when you play it or when you attack it, so this is also new. You can, it can trigger on two different. So it has two different triggers, and. Whenever uh, you play or attack with it, you uh, can boost one card to any creature or you can return a boost card to your hand. Okay, so what I, want Go ahead. Do, what I want to do, I want to use this card, but I don't know how to do it. Oh no, I misclicked. Oh, oh no, it worked. Actually, it worked. Um, so I, um, what I did, I returned the um, the boost card from the Plast Tiger Scroll to my hand. It was the radioactive pest, and now it is not boosted anymore. It's not power four, but power three now. But now the Goat Dragon on attack cannot defeat it. So I kind of preserved my my Plast Tiger Scroll in play, which is kind of an issue. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure this was correct. What? If I would have let Basti attack with it, I would have won. If I attacked last turn, put him to one, and then he attacked, the Blessed Tiger Squirrel would have gone to the discard pile, and he would not have been able to block ah, either of his creatures. Ah, he could not block with both, yes. right. But maybe he would have yeah. seen it, I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably not, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I think it's kind of over anyway. Marvin, as you're as you're currently winning, I ask you a question. Do you sure. plan to make even more expansions? So um, as long as people are excited about the game and want to want to have more expansions, we will of course uh, of course work on it because we think that there is a lot of potential for um, new expansions, new cards. There's a lot of design space we didn't uh, we didn't explore so far. So yes, we will uh, we will work on new expansions. So as I uh, probably lose, I will just want to show another friend of us from the first set who comes back. Yeah. So the squirrel I played earlier is a blessed version of of an old creature or a creature that we already knew. And this is a cursed version. So while it is in discard pile, it uh, makes your other creatures worse. And the other one had a beneficial effect for you. So this is too... Two sides of the same coin. I will attack with my sneaky creature. Why would you? <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of over for me. I will just put some pressure and lose the game. Attack again. And then you lose to my tiger squirrel. And it is blessed, and it it's kind of dominated game. the whole the whole game. This yeah, little guy. That is, it, it, That's right. Yeah. It really showed what can happen in this uh, in this expansion because yes, it was in your discard pile and it had an effect. Then it was in my on my side in in, in the play area and had an effect. It could have had an effect in my discard pile as well. So some cards yes. went went uh, from your discard pile to boost my creatures from there to my hand. So this is this is what what's going on in this in this expansion. It's uh, a lot yeah. of cards uh, uh, that can be used as resources in a different in a different very different way. Um, and it feels very different to the base set and very different to the uh, evolution set. It will also probably appeal to different player types. Um, but I kind of really enjoy to play these uh, different angles of Mindbug, and um, yeah, I, I, I like I like them both a lot. I think this is what what both expansions have in common. You get a bit of more options. So either you have an action that you can trigger or evolve, and in this thing you can have a look at your discard pile or, or the opponent's one, and then just boost from there and and do stuff with like. With with the, the the parts of the game that were not used before, uh, you can now take them into account and just have really mo more options. Um, and nevertheless, it's still a, a simple or easy to learn game. I think that combination is, is really, really a good one. I think for me, it's also cool that the two expansions have a different complexity level. I'm pretty sure about this. I think the 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 um, evolution one is a bit more straightforward on this and. The Eternity one is a bit more complex with more mm. stuff going on, but you can be more tactical, I think. Yes, to a certain degree. I think in the in the in the other one, you in, in the evolution one, you still have, due to the more uh, chances you have or options you have, you still have to think on your on your choices. But I totally agree that this one, really doing shenanigans with the discard pile and boosting stuff and setting up cards such that your card that you yeah. play the turn after benefits from it it's 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 really amazing yeah yeah there can be quite a lot of cards uh, having an, an impact on the board uh, with ongoing mm -hmm. effects from from this card and yeah yeah that's correct and that's something that we are also um i would say still working on so for example you have seen that this that there was a card in the discard pile that had an effect um at the moment, our user interface is uh, is just really a prototype, um, so it doesn't it didn't highlight that there is a card in the discard pile. Ah, yeah. So um, that is something that yeah. will in the uh, digital game will change for sure, and also in the um, in the physical game, we encourage you to put the cards that have an effect while they're in the discard pile. We encourage you to put them a little bit on top um, of your discard pile so that that it's Kind of known information to uh, to 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 each player, so that you don't try to trick them by sneaking a card into your discard pile without them seeing them. Um, that's not what we actually want. We want them to be like uh, 
like known information um, so that everyone can evaluate the game state yeah, and really really make that prominent in the in the app as well and and it should help you right right now you have to sometimes <laughs> know what what's going on but it's a prototype as we said and uh, this is all the things like the user experience in general uh that we want to optimize of course when it goes to a product phase yeah no. so i have seen another question about whether we want to plan to sell the app or plan to do some kind of uh, freemium model or microtransaction model so to be honest um we don't know that for sure at the moment. Um, monetization is, of course, it is important for a, a game like that. You know, there is a complete team of developers, like six to eight people, working on this working on this game, uh, plus a lot of freelancers and external graphic uh, agencies and and so on. So we somehow need to make money with it. The question is how to do it. There are different options, of course. We could we could sell it as an as a, um, as a paid version. That's a, a model that quite a few um, board game implementations uh, do. And there's on the other spectrum, there's there is like uh, offering it for free and maybe working with stuff like season passes um, or charging for new expansions and stuff like that or for cosmetics in the game and um, we didn't really decide on what on what model it will be we are still in the prototype phase and within the prototype phase we start testing different monetization models for this um, for this game we are very interested in 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 your opinion here what you what 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 you would prefer um, we could both could see both models for this game at the moment, we tend towards the free model a little bit more because we would like to get as many people uh, playing the game as um, as possible. But both options have their pros and cons for sure. So if there are any other questions uh, regarding the game or the digital version, feel free to Post them in the chat in the chat now. We will be here for a couple of more uh, minutes, I think. So maybe before we before we close the session for today, um, I would like to ask the the game the developers a bit about um, yeah how much effort it actually is to work on the implementation of the rules engine compared to all the other stuff that goes into developing this app like setting up the server infra infrastructure thinking about um, user interfaces and stuff like that because i was always interested in that when i was a, when i was a player and were playing games like magic hearthstone uh, let the frontera and these kind of games um, how much time they they spent working on just implementing the the core rules engine for the cards versus all the stuff that comes on top of that later on good, good question i think we didn't keep track <laughs> so detailed <laughs> on this but but i, I if i would I, yeah i would answer I it it's, yeah yeah okay this this way um basically we started only with with the logic Right. I mean, a, a few uh, yeah, we, we plain visuals, first. and we did yeah, really in the first. beginning. It was always like this: this this game cycle itself that should work, and uh, we spent quite some time into that. And the f the further we come with the game, um, the more other stuff we have to do, and that is a good sign, I think, because that means that our basic concept of this this uh, this game flow is quite robust and that we did it quite well that we don't have to touch that all the time um of course with, with different effects there come changes that's for sure but it was totally worth it to really concentrate on this this game flow completely and then yeah step by step right now it's i don't know <laughs> i think it's maybe even half half at the moment yes we maybe really did yeah. a lot for a long 
maybe we spent nearly a year on, on doing the logic part, but with basic visuals and, but yeah, not year full time, yeah, year evenings. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's near half half. Now it's getting, I think the, the our logic is pretty robust and we have most of the new effects that come, we don't need to re-implement so many stuff. I uh, don't need to implement so many stuff. We can reuse what we have already. I think that will change in future, depending on how weird the effects will be. I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, but, I'm yeah. pretty sure Richard will, will break that because he comes up with the weirdest effects all the time. And he doesn't yeah. care so much about uh, whether it breaks any root stuff uh, or back end uh, of our yeah. development system. But I mean, it's a I, good I, thing to, to have the architecture such that you at least can, I don't know, if, a, if an expansion comes with 32 cards, you can at least say that, I don't know, 20 something of them are just like, okay, we, we know what we, what we have to do. And if a bunch of them are really just like out of the world, then we have to think about it. And we, I, we enjoy doing that because this is like, this is the fun of the game. And this is kind of the, uh, believe it or not, kind of the fun of the development as well. I think these are the yeah. low-hanging fruits you always refer to and that you all <laughs> yeah, argue sure. about who is who, who's, uh, <laughs> uh, allowed to do the low-hanging fruits that uh, later can say, so I implemented half of this set alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. You start with the low-hanging fruits, so you just make progress. It's for motivation purpose, Marvin. But, but uh, after, like, I, we know lots of card games. Uh, we play it ourselves. But now, after, after doing this and having implemented these rules engines, I'm really impressed by the guys who implemented Magic. I think it's, it's quite complex. And they have yeah. so many more triggers and game phases and stuff yes. <laughs> than Mindbug. I think Mindbug is, is well suited for, for digital. Yeah, it is. So, we think so too. So maybe it, maybe because yeah. that's a good maybe a good transition into uh, discussing why we think it's a good very good for digital and what kind of new game modes we actually want to experience uh, experience uh, with in the in the near future. So maybe that's something for you, Stefan, uh, yeah. because you are also very in, involved in this in these topics. Yeah, um, when we when we first started designing the the game and had the standard game mode one v one implemented, we also thought about um, how we can um, make this this um, the principle of mind bug that you cannot change cards um, and adapt cards. Um, how we can do that in the digital version, and that's when we uh, came up with the we called it the progression mode. Basically, you play a series of games. Um, against other players and after each game you can um, um, improve the, the cards that you have in your in your in your current deck um, and so for example you can increase power or add another um, effect on the card um, and um, then you play um, a series of games if you lose three times you're out if you if you win six time, uh, six games um, you finished uh, the progression so this was example uh, is for example a game mode um, that he created now during uh, during the prototype phase, which I enjoyed the most. I don't know how how you feel if you if you have another game mode um, that you think is 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 more competitive or um, um, more adopted the, the digital possibilities of, of of the digital environment. I think the mode is is a real cool thing because actually we tested it and with a physical game <laughs> yeah. we had a workshop weekend and we tested it with a with a physical game which is fun, and papers, yeah. really fun as well uh, but but having that in the digital world of course you can imagine really crazy stuff going on and the question is to what extent do you want to push that so what is for sure we th this basic game mode one we want will always be there and uh, and there are lots of ideas for other modes and this progression modes really i mean it it's it sticks with us it's uh, it's a real cool thing it's fun to kind of shaping your your own deck even though you start with i don't know maybe a random deck maybe predefined decks to be defined but you shape it the way you want it um and that is really like some meta impact that you have there that is really 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 nice yeah. and works really well for this game yeah, you yeah, can very specifically this... build to the combos that we just yes. seen here. Yeah, yes. You can exactly yeah. put that cards in your deck and, and push it that you get it. 
Yeah, and but I think the important aspect of it at the moment, this might change in the future, but at the, in the moment, the important aspect at the moment is that you won't face like the over and over again the same constructed deck that is in the current meta, the top level one tire deck. It's more like um, a deck that you will shape over a couple of games, like the six or seven games, I don't know, maybe a few more. Um, but then this experience is over and you, you start from scratch with a, new, with a new deck and maybe it develops in a completely different, different direction so that you don't play against the same decks over and over again. And um, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of fun with that because then at some point, and it, it feels really like, um, it, it's a little bit like the fun that I had with constructing my own decks in, in Magic, but stripped down to um, a small little, little tournament. So it feels like uh, still like a limited mode, but adds the aspect of the constructed part that I, that I, that I really like. And, um, and it feels and quite cool if you play against a deck that plays Hunter turn one, Hunter turn two, Hunter turn three, and that's something that you do, normally don't see, and you need to adapt your adapt your strategy and uh, get creative to work around that, and that's really interesting, I think. And I think what you just described shows that it matches Mindbug really well because Mindbug itself is like having the ex most uh, most uh, important or, or uh, fascinating experiences of these other games where you where you build your decks and where you have like a ramp up phase and stuff like that condensed to these these moments like simpler just easy to learn and just go to the to the board right away and basically this mode is the deck construction stripped down to the most interesting parts like you have a decision which creatures uh, do I want to take? Do I want to boost this creature or not? Uh, boost means not boost like in-game, but just just um, make it better uh, in my progression deck. And I think it, it really fits Mindbug really well. And another game mode um, I would, would shortly um, highlight is on, um, that we implemented is the async mode, we called it. So that you can play, play it like um, chess via email, so you do your turn. Um, then the opponent um, can uh, can look in at any time he wants, and then do his turn, send out the turn, and then uh, you get a message and can can do your turn in an asynchronous way. Um, this was was actually requested by by one of our developers. Um, I think it was also requested by a lot of our yeah. playtesters. Yeah, I heard it ah, several yeah. times. Think from community. Yeah. 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 So so there's, this is a game mode we we implemented. And we also have a, a implemented a classical tournament mode um, where you play a series of games um, um, with three wins, uh, six wins or three losses, and uh, you play with a with a with a, a given deck um, through the tournament. Yeah, and and um, we are quite we are quite looking forward on getting feedback also from the community on their ideas, which game modes they'd like to see and and play Mindbug with. So this is this is why we are looking for the the closed beta um, um, where we can um, create the game modes for the community, test them with the players, and get their feedback on on making Mindbug better. Yeah, we are really looking forward to a closed beta. I, yeah. We don't yeah. have it. We don't have a date yet, um, but uh, that's something we would really like to do in the future. We hope we will be able to. And um, I think did we already post a link in the chat for that? Yep, okay. I posted uh, the sign up link in the in this chat in the live chat. So if you are interested at the moment, in the beta, that um, is the best way to sign up at the moment. Yeah. yeah, for us there's lots of work needed to get there that more people can participate in the app. We need to like polish the UI that it's more usable because we there's yeah. Yeah, it's quite some information missing, and also from the back end, we need uh, more like more stable servers and more capacity on the servers, so that we can ramp up the number of users. Yeah, this is our task that we are currently working on. Yeah. Yeah, here uh, comments noch an answer. Uh, there was an answer for the um, sorry for the German. Uh, there was an answer <laughs> because the question the answer came in German, uh, and my, it was my intention to answer in German as well. So there was an, um, a, a question or a comment that uh, someone really likes that Mindbug is not a deck construction game, and the that's I, that's also an aspect that 
uh, that we like and that many many of our players like and that will always be part of the game. But we we think Mindberg is such a robust core game um, that it is cool to test and play around with different modes every now and then. It doesn't mean that this is, will be our core game mode forever. Uh, maybe this is just a mode that active every now and then on a Wednesday or so, yeah, um, or over a weekend and there's a tournament in this mode or whatsoever. But um, it really, the f fun part about this, uh, this progression mode is that you don't get like hundreds of cards in the beginning and are overwhelmed with the amount of possibilities you can combine. No, you start with a 10 card random deck and after a match you get the possibility to exchange one card, choose one of three and exchange it with one in your deck. And step by step your deck will feel more like your own creation. So um, it removes a lot of the aspects that I dislike about deck construction but keeps the element of... Uh, kind of feeling engaged and involved with your deck. So um, really interesting to see how you how you um, will like it in the future. And um, yeah, there will be a lot of smaller, funny game modes that we can test as well, like a, a quick mode where you only have one life point and three cards and one uh, mind bug, for example, stuff like that. So you can play in a, in a minute or two um, or game, a, like could. changing global globals yeah, was like, another thing we experimented already already with. Yeah. Like having global effects that ch totally changed the game. We have already implemented a bunch of puzzles, so that could be interesting for some of you who who want to find the perfect move in a really tricky situation, and that that there is already a bunch of puzzles, and that could be something that we uh, think of throwing in once in a while, or for for. for uh, new expansions or stuff like that. So you really get a set board state and you have your hand and you have like the choices. How can you win? And uh, and uh, that is that is a, f a fun thing that we, we played around a bit with. Yeah. So I'm I'm just showed one of the one of the puzzles. I can't remember how to solve it to be honest. <laughs> I would have to think about it. So um, but uh, you see it's kind of a predefined board state. Um, and you need to decide what to do from here to win. So it's not like a game that you start from scratch. It's like oh, both players have used their mind bugs. They are not at uh, um, at full life points. They don't have cards in their hands anymore. It's just this small board state with these five cards and you could decide what to do. So for example, um, I could, I don't know, attack with the, with the ferret here. It's probably not the right move to do. I didn't think it through. <laughs> um, if he attacks with it, I can block and now I can attack with a, with a ferret. This is a very simple one that worked here now, but it also, um, we have to say that this is not a perfect puzzle that's working at the moment, I think, because it's just a random AI maneuvering the opponent and it could have hunted well, with I think the, the, the ferret bomber with the killer huh. bee. So um, it depends on how the opponent how the opponent behaves. So this is just a, it's not a script, not scripted at the moment. It's just a random AI that's doing, doing stuff. So for example, in, if I try it again, it might attack with a killer bee this time. Yeah. And hunt it down. So yeah, now... this is an example of a feature that I think it worked in the, in the past. I think mm -hmm. we had implemented it in with a special AI that should have done that move, but mm -hmm. maybe it broke in the meantime. <laughs> so yeah. That's part of the prototype that's rapidly now, now you, <laughs> developed. Now you see that my actual move was not, not the best because now I lose to this yeah. uh, poisonous creature here. So if I want to solve it, I need to do it again. And this is this is part of the fun of it. You need to, you can, uh, it's like really like a complicated, difficult situation where you need to think about how to solve it. So maybe it's, I need to, oh no, that's still, still the wrong action. I cannot block here. So now I win, yeah, I think. Because I can attack <laughs> here, and if it attacks with a plated scorpion, I can block. And now I win from here. So. Yeah, but that was uh, the, the first one. There are more, more complicated ones, uh, and we will also, of course, yeah, create new ones or, uh, as we did during the campaign as well. Okay. Shall we call it a day and wrap it up? 
Yeah, okay, I everyone, think so. Yeah. For the cool session, it was uh, fun playing Mindbug again, and was fun to show it show it to um, our our players and the Mindbug fans. We really hope to deliver this game to you as soon as possible, and um, yeah, start a beta phase so that we can collect your feedback. Um, Stefan, can you repost the link? Yeah. At least I cannot see it in the the beta yeah. access link. Uh, yeah, let me try again. Uh, let me quickly check. Did it work? Can you see it? I can't see it at the moment. Maybe it's strange again. I cannot. Edit. We can also add it to the description of the. Video. I will add it. We add it to the description. Yeah. The the link to the to the beta sign up. Yeah. Okay. Strange. Yeah. Good. So yeah, it was was quite a lot of fun to play here. Yes, I think we're yep. very cool matches. Next time I will win. Yeah, for sure you will. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, guys. Have a nice rest of the See day. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.